relations, uh, in this case, uh, of imaginary time occlusion with applications in chemistry again, which I think is a very hot topic. So thank you. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm showing a postdoc uh, from uh, Oxford uh, in Simon Benjamin School. Uh, so first, I would like to thank the organizer to invite me to give this uh, talk uh, in this very uh, nice conference uh, workshop. And today, I will talk about uh, quantum simulation of uh, imaginary time pollution. Uh, it's a theory work, but I hope you can uh, uh, get interested. Uh, so this is the outline of the work. Uh, here, uh, first I will tell you about what is uh, real and uh, imaginary time, and uh, what is the uh, algorithm, what is the variational method. And then I will uh, briefly introduce the theory part, and also its application in chemistry, and summarize. So, uh, as we all know, time is a very fundamental and important uh, physical quantity. So a long time we can uh, consider the evolution of many body uh, quantum systems. So, for example, uh, by considering the Schrodinger equation, by considering the Schrodinger equation, we can evolve a quantum state from one time to another time. And also, in relativity, time is a kind of a, uh, independent or uh, analogous uh, uh, axis of a space. While in physics, we also have an imaginary time. So, what is imaginary time? So, imaginary time is some unphysical uh, quantity. Uh, it is defined by multiplying some imaginary value to the real time. But instead of considering this as an imaginary term, we consider tau as a real term. So imaginary time is something unphysical. And we can, so for example, for evolution, we can have an imaginary time evolution, which is given by e to the minus h tau. Of course, this is not a unitary operation, so this is just uh, some mathematical uh, matrix. And while uh, in relativity, we have, uh, if we consider in imaginary time, we have a Minkowski space. So this is, uh, we don't have a minus sign here in the matrix. And while uh, for real time, we have a, a propagator like this one, while for imaginary time, we can have a corresponding statistical mechanics, such as a Gibbs state. So overall, imaginary time is uh, some powerful mathematical uh, uh, tool in physics. And in this talk, I will not uh, talk about the whole uh, uh, application of uh, uh, real and imaginary time. Instead, I will focus on the evolution of time. So for real time, uh, let's see how can we simulate the evolution. With the castle computer, uh, we can simulate uh, the evolution by first encoding the initial state into a vector. And for the evolution, we can represent it at the matrix and then the evolution of the, of the quantum system can be just realized by a matrix operation. <coughs> and of course, for many uh, quantum systems, we cannot realize this efficiency because we have exponential degrees of freedom for many quantum systems. While for quantum mechanics, suppo suppose we have a universal quantum computer, <coughs> then we can first encode a quantum state into qubits. As we encode quantum state into another quantum state, so generally, for many uh, uh, realistic physics systems, we can do this quite efficiently. And the evolution of uh, real time is just a unitary operator. As you know, a quantum circuit is also a unitary operator. So we can just simulate the unitary operator with a quantum circuit. For example, with the Trotter Suzuki decomposition method. In general, we can simulate many, uh, uh, many body uh, systems using a quantum computer efficiently. Now, let's see, how can we do it for imaginary time? For a classical computer, we can similarly do it. So we encode the states using a vector, and then we encode uh, the evolution by a matrix. And then the evolution is just by multiplying the matrix to the state vector. It is OK, we can do it, but it may not be efficient for uh, realistic systems. And then let's see, how can we do it with a quantum computer? And for a quantum computer, we can still encode the state efficiently. But the problem arises when we want to realize the evolution. Because imaginary time evolution is not physical, it's not unitary. So how can you realize a, a, a non-unitary operator with a quantum circuit? So the problem is how to simulate unphysical processes with physical processes. And here is the solution, the hybrid algorithm or the variational method. So briefly speaking, hybrid algorithm is a combination of classical and quantum algorithms. 
So it divides the problem into two parts. So the easy part is uh, solved, easy or unfeasible part is solved by the classical uh, computer. While the hard or physical part is realized by a quantum computer. I see here as, a, uh, as an example. So the quantum circuit is a quite shallow circuit, uh, which consists of uh, a few uh, single and a few uh, uh, many body uh, cubic gates. And then for each gate, we have some parameters in it. And for each round of the circuit, we can perform some measurement. And then based on the measurement, we can use a class of computer to calculate some cost function, for example, the average value of the Hamiltonian. <laughs> and then based on the cost function, we can minimize it. So we can minimize the average energy in order to get, get the ground state. But while as we already have this cost function as a classical value, so we can do it just with a classical optimization problem, such as, such as gradient descent or any uh, optimization problems. And then we can just update the parameters ba based on the measurement results and do it uh, and so on. So the advantage of a uh, variational method or hybrid algorithm is that we just uh, divide the problem into two parts. So we don't need to do everything with a quantum computer. So we can just make the easy part into a classical computer. And also, uh, as we, as we uh, divide it into two parts, uh, the quantum computer may just consist of very shallow circuits, which is very good for current noisy quantum devices. Because if you have a very, very long circuit, errors very, will be very easily accumulated. But if you have a shallow circuit, you may just have very few error. And we can, and recently we have uh, some other techniques other than error, error correction. So we can correct uh, errors for a very shallow circuit. And there are so many works recently about hybrid algorithm, and you can uh, find some references, for example, in this uh, work and uh, also other works. Okay, so we know imaginary time, we know hybrid algorithm, and then let's see how can we simulate imaginary time with the, uh, the hybrid algorithm. Let's first uh, look at the definition of uh, imaginary time evolution. So the normalized imaginary time evolution is given by uh, acting e to the minus h tau to initial state and divide by the normalization factor. Of course, this is uh, just some matrix uh, operation and it's not physical. Um, we can also uh, convert into a, a weak rotated Schrodinger equation and it is like this one. So in comparison with the conventional Schrodinger equation, we don't have an i here. And also we have an e tau, which is average uh, energy of the Hamiltonian. So e tau is here because we have a normalization here. While for the conventional uh, Schrodinger equation, we don't have normalization because it's just a unitary uh, a process. So this is just the definition of imaginary time evolution. And a very powerful uh, result for imaginary time is Suppose the initial state has non-zero overlap with the ground state of the Hamiltonian. So suppose E0 is the uh, ground state and alpha 0 is not zero. And then you will find that the uh, states along imaginary time evolution will always go to the ground state. This is because we have uh, some exponential decreasing of the energy uh, uh, in uh, here. While for higher energy, it will decrease faster. While for lower energy, it will de de uh, decrease uh, uh, slow, uh, slower. So here, uh, I just omit the normalization. But if you recover the normalization, you will just always get to the ground state. So intu intuitively, you will see, for any given state, along imaginary time evolution, it will just always go to the ground state and avoid all the local minimums. And of course, this is just uh, some mathematical definition, and there's no, uh, so we don't know. We still don't know how to simulate it uh, with a quantum computer. And then let's see uh, how can we do it with a variational method. So first, we need to approximate the original state with the trial state. So here, the trial state is uh, some state with parameters in it. So for example, the trial state can be like uh, this circuit. So here, this state is prepared by the circuit. We have a, a single cubic gate, a control a rotation, and we repeat the process uh, for a few depths. And for each of the gates, we have a parameter. Gate. So we can change, tune the parameter uh, in order to get the state we want. So we generally refer to the whole uh, uh, set of states as an ansatz, so or a guess, or educated guess of the, uh, the many-body uh, uh, wave function. And suppose we have uh, a trial state. And then we can, uh, so, and this 
is the original uh, uh, imaginary time evolution. And then what we do is to project the original imaginary time evolution onto the ansatz space. So for example, at time tau, we have a state uh, which can be represented by the trial state, uh, this one with the parameter theta tau. And then the original time, imaginary time evolution will evolve the state to another one. It may evolve the state out of the ansatz space, but with the variational principle, we can project it back to the ansatz space. So the idea is uh, we have uh, some imaginary time evolution which may be phys uh, physical, but if we consider the ansatz space as this one, we can just project the evolution onto ansatz space. So what we simulated is not the original uh, imaginary time evolution. What we sim simulated is the projected uh, uh, evolution. And of course, if you choose a very, very good ansatz, which can encode all the states around the original imaginary time evolution, then we just simulate the original, the exact imaginary time evolution. And the math is, uh, suppose we have a state here, the original evolution is this one, we project back, then we have uh, another parameters at time uh, uh, tau plus uh, delta tau. And then the evolution of the of the wave function just becomes the, the evolution of the parameters. So instead of uh, simulating the wave function, we can simulate uh, the uh, evolution of the parameters like by solving this uh, linear equation. Here A and C are given by uh, the trial state and also the Hamiltonian. And then we can solve this uh, differential equation by any differential uh, equation solvers. For example, we can solve it with the Euler's method by choosing a uh, time step delta tau, and uh, we update the parameter by solving the linear equation. And up to now, you may ask, uh, what is the quantum computing? There is no quantum computing. We just uh, have this equation, update the parameter, but where is quantum computing? In fact, quantum computing helps to measure the A and C values. Suppose the state is prepared, for example, by a very large uh, thumb circuit, and then we cannot measure A and C with a castle computer. It can, be, it can be only measured by a quantum circuit. So these two slides uh, uh, discuss is how can we uh, prepare the ansatz with a quantum circuit, and how can we measure the, uh, the A and C uh, values with the, the circuit. But I will uh, probably skip it uh, for this moment, and we can come back to it if anyone uh, is interested. So overall, we can solve the differential equation. Uh, we, we can simulate the imaginary time evolution by simulating the, uh, by evolving the parameters. And we solve the a differential equation of the parameters with a classical computer, but, but the equation is from a quantum computer. Now we will apply the results to uh, find the ground state energy. <coughs> so uh, conventionally, we have a uh, we already have we already have a variational method for finding ground state energy, which is called variational quantum Hegel solver. And so the idea is uh, very similar. So we have a trial state, which is uh, controlled by parameters theta. And then we want to minimize, we want to get the ground state. And then we minimize the uh, average energy by uh, searching the, uh, the parameter space. How to do it? We can just consider uh, the average energy as a cost function. And then we can just minimize the cost function as a, just a general uh, optimization uh, classical uh, problem. So for example, uh, for gradient descent, we can calculate the gradient of the cost function and then we update the parameter with the, uh, according to the gradient. But well, the problem for this uh, method is uh, classical optimization algorithm generally goes to local minimum because uh, when the uh, space of ansatz is very huge, because we may have many local minimums. And generally, there is no way to avoid local minimum. So yeah, we can do it efficiently, but uh, we may just get some bad estimation, bad uh, uh, minimization uh, result. But as you may still remember, for imaginary time evolution, we can always get to the ground state. And while for the variational imaginary time evolution uh, method, we project the original e uh, evolution onto the ansatz space, although it is not exact simulation of the original evolution, but it is still quite it, it is still quite a good approximation of the evolution. And in comparison to the gradient descent method, the imaginary time evolution now updates the parameter with the, this A matrix here. So here, here this A is a constant. While here this C is a gradient. But the difference for imaginary time evolution is that we have uh, this A matrix here. 
Remember that A is defined by the, uh, by the derivative of the ansatz. So it has information of the ansatz. The intuition is uh, like this one. <coughs> so for a given initial state, the gradient descent <coughs> may lead you to a local minimum by following the gradient. But the imaginary time evolution, it considers the geometry of ansatz. So it may just avoid the local minimum and lead, lead you to a true ground state. And of course, this is uh, some intuition. And uh, next, we will show, we will verify this intuition with uh, some simulation results. Here we can see the chemistry simulation. So the first quantized Hamiltonian for a molecule is uh, defined by this one. So we have a uh, uh, nuclear interaction and nuclear interaction and uh, electron interaction and uh, nuclear int uh, electron interaction and so on. And by following a standard uh, procedure, we can convert uh, this uh, first quantized Hamilton into a second quantized Hamilton. So here, H is dependent on the distance between two, uh, two, uh, the two nuclei. And here, the A and the A dagger is the annihilation and the creation uh, operators of fermions. And then we can follow some standard fermion, uh, fermionic encoding method to convert this Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. And if you are interested, you can find many papers discussing chemistry simulation, for example, this one. So first, we consider the simplest molecule, the hydrogen molecule. The hydrogen molecule in the minimum basis is just to, uh, can be described by two qubits. Here we have uh, uh, six uh, parameters, G0 to G5 which is determined by the distance between the two nuclei. And here the x, y, z are poly matrices. For this uh, simple Hamiltonian, we can have a trial state. The, a very popular chemistry trial state is the unitary uh, couple cluster trial state. While for, for this uh, molecule, it is very simple. We only have a one parameter here. And this state can be prepared, prepared by a circuit uh, introduced by uh, John Martinez in the uh, uh, paper uh, last, last year. And uh, so you can see here we only have one parameter. And in this case, according to the definition of A, so the A and C matrices of the differential equation of theta, you will find that A is a constant. Well, as A is a, is a constant, it is equivalent to gradient descent. While C still depends on the, uh, the Hamiltonian and also the derivative of the ansatz. While C can be measured by this uh, circuit. So for this simple case, Great imaginary time evolution is equivalent to uh, a gradient descent. But next, we consider another ansatz, which is uh, re also recent, recently introduced by the IBM teams, uh, called the hardware efficient ansatz. And uh, the ansatz is uh, like this one. So we have a single cube uh, rotation, control not, single cube operation, and we measurement. Here we have uh, eight parameters instead of one parameter. And now, the A matrix is not a constant, so it's a non-trivial matrix. And C is still similar to the last one. And for example, uh, one, of, one term of the A matrix can be measured by a circuit like this one. Here is the simulation result. So the x-axis is the imaginary time tau, and the y-axis is the energy. At time tau zero, we choose a random parameter uh, of, the, of the ansatz. And then we evolve the states according to the imaginary time tau with the variation of <coughs> Here, the dashed line is the exact imaginary time evolution because we only have two qubits. So we can just simulate evolution just by just uh, uh, calculating the matrix and uh, apply the matrix to the state. So we have the exact uh, imaginary time evolution. And we also, so the dot uh, result is the variational imaginary time evolution. So it is the evolution we project the original evolution onto the ansatz space. You can see that they are quite close, especially for the hardware efficient ansatz because we have more parameters. And it is also quite close for the uh, UCC ansatz, uh, unit couple cluster ansatz. And uh, the most interesting case is uh, they all converge just to the ground state. So it means it works for this uh, simple molecule. But you may say it's so simple, and uh, in fact, gradient descent also works perfectly for this molecule. Then we consider a larger molecule, the lithium hydride molecule. So for this molecule, it has 12 spin orbitals <coughs> originally, and then we need 12 qubits to encode it. But we can reduce it to six qubits by considering some uh, symmetry or reduction uh, scheme. 
And the trap, uh, I didn't list the, the Hamiltonian here because it has uh, 300 terms. Uh, but the ansatz we try here is uh, also the hardware efficient ansatz. So we have uh, some single qubit operation, rotation, control rotation, and then we repeat the process. Uh, single qubit rotation and uh, control rotation. We choose a different architecture to avoid some uh, pattern of, uh, of the, uh, the ansatz. And in total, we have 42 parameters, which is definitely less than the dimension of the Hebel space. Uh, then the task is, uh, so we initialize the parameter randomly, and then we evolve the state along imaginary time, and then we see whether it goes to ground state or not. Here is the simulation result. So here, uh, the blue line is the uh, exact uh, ground state energy. And the red line is the imaginary time function. You can see it goes to the ground state quite fast. While this dash line is the gradient descent. Gradient descent get trapped in local minimum, but imaginary time function found the true ground state. And here the jump, uh, here we have some jump here, not continuous uh, curve. It is because we choose a, a finite uh, step size. So we, here we choose a, uh, the step, step size uh, to 0 0.01, I think. Yeah. If you choose a smaller and smaller step size, it will convert to better uh, as a smooth curve. And here, this is just one uh, simulation result with a one random uh, uh, initial uh, parameter setting. And here we also run uh, 112 independent uh, tests with uh, different initial uh, parameters. And from the left uh, plot, you can see, uh, this is a histogram of the, of the symmetry results. So the correct value is uh, near here. So it's just the uh, uh, orange bar. So you can see that the variational, uh, the variationally imaginary time evolution method found the ground state with a probability more than 90%. Uh, while for gradient descent, it almost always get trapped in local minimum. While on the right hand side, you will find more details. So here, this is the true ground state. I didn't plot the true ground state because it's overlap with the, uh, with the imaginary time uh, uh, results. So this red dot, you can just say it as a, a, a true ground state. While this uh, a blue uh, dot, they are the uh, gradient descent method. So we found that gradient descent uh, get trapped in local minimum, but imaginary time evolution magically uh, just uh, avoid uh, local minimum. So to summarize, uh, I, so we first need to remember that the variational method is a very nice method which is suitable for near-term quantum hardware because it only uses a very shallow circuit. And uh, uh, so it can tolerate uh, uh, the, the imperfections for the current uh, devices. And then with the variational method, we propose to simulate imaginary time evolution. Uh, with a quantum computer. So we can simulate uh, uh, an unphysical process with a physical uh, device. And of course, as we use, a variational, uh, uh, we use the variational method, so our algorithm is also suitable for uh, uh, test and uh, 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 with the current uh, devices. And we can also combine it with the error mitigation method that can reduce the noise uh, for a shallow circuit. Um, so we further apply our method to uh, find the ground state and ground state energy. And in fact, it can be generalized to other optimization problems. For example, we can generalize to uh, three sets or any optimization problems, which, so as long as you can encode the cost function into a Hamiltonian. Furthermore, we can also apply the results into uh, Gibbs state preparation and uh, machine learning. This is because if you initialize the uh, states into a maximum mixed state. And then after evolving the state along imaginary time, you will get a uh, Gibbs state. And as Gibbs state uh, is a very useful tool in restricted uh, Boltzmann machine uh, uh, in machine learning, so we also uh, expect that our method will also play a, a very important role in also machine learning. And uh, this is a group photo, and thank you very much. Um, have you tried comparing it with some other uh, 
um, optimization algorithm down gradient descent? Uh, not yet, but uh, so I think almost all the algorithms they are similar to gradient, gradient descent. Uh, the only, I think uh, the the one, the very different one I know is the simulated annealing. So yeah, we may try to compare it with the simulated annealing. But all the other algorithms, it's more like uh, you can see the higher orders of the uh, of the derivative. So because we can also consider higher order derivative of the imaginary contribution, so there's no fundamental distinction for. But some of them are just better uh, in um, going through the local minima. That's why I'm asking. But yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, for, for for this stage, we just uh, propose the general idea and compare it with the 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 you can say simplest uh, optimization algorithm, the gradient set, and we show we have an advantage. Thank you. Um, can I ask what size molecule is not classically? Uh, simulatable to find the ground state. So h how big a molecule do you need to have before uh, Pascal breaks down? In fact, I think it uh, depends on the accuracy you want to achieve. So even for hydrogen, uh, I'm not sure whether it is true for hydrogen, but even for a very small molecule, if you want, if you really want to achieve a very, very high accuracy, it can be very hard for, for a classical computer. Because if you want to simulate uh, a, a molecule uh, very accurately, then you need to consider more, more and more uh, spin optos. And if you have more spin optos, then you need more qubits to encode it. This is, of course, half, half for classical uh, uh, computer. Question there? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Jeff Lee. I'm from Berkeley. Is it always the case that your algorithm will find global minima? Uh, our algorithm find local minima. No, no. It's a, so as the as this one, uh, as the solution result here, you can see that uh, we almost always found uh, not, so we found a uh, uh, the global minimum, yeah, with 90% uh, probability. But uh, we still fail for like, uh, yeah, you can see here, this red dot, it's found some uh, local minimum. Uh, yeah. This is because we consider a restricted ansatz, because the original, so suppose you can realize the original uh, imaginary convolution, then you can always find the ground state. And suppose, of course, you initialize a state that has a finite overlap with the ground state. Then you can always find the ground, uh, true ground state. But the problem is we cannot do, do it with the directional method. So we should, what we can do is uh, to choose a good ansatz that can uh, encode the evolution of the, of the imaginary time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> maybe a question for you. Talk. I mean, I mean uh, Mr. Sonsi. So you uh, here you can find the ground state. How do you calculate uh, uh, find the exact state? Uh, yeah. So it's uh, so very similar. We so we have a so in literature we already have a few uh, methods that can find uh, exact states. So one method is to change the Hamiltonian into a function of the Hamiltonian. For example, you can change h to h minus lambda square, and then by finding the ground state for that Hamiltonian, you can find exact states. And we also have some other ideas that uh, have had uh, excited states. But uh, overall, uh, the algorithm is kind of independent of that uh, uh, method. So, so our method applies to general optimization problem. Okay, and I think it's time. Sorry, it's probably a lunchtime. You can continue answering questions. So thank you very much again.